I have the single greatest audience on the entirety of the internet because one of you guys sent this to me via email and Mwah. oh god i love you this is coming to us from npr trump has weaponized masculinity as president here's why it matters now this is written by danielle kurtzelbin and you know let's go take a look on over at danielle here she's a political reporter she has a lot of phds everything else like that fellas you do you guys see the uh you guys see the gigantic red flag yeah the missing upper lip we've we've had this conversation guys We've had this conversation time and time again. The missing upper lip should always let you know that you are dealing with a feminist woman who believes that she is just almighty and, you know, I'm every woman. So, yeah, let's uh, t- let's take this on just as far as we can because it's very, very wordy, all right? But I'd like to use it to contrast it, con- to contrast Trump's leadership to more feminine leadership. And if there was anybody we could use for a more feminine leader, it would be our governor here in New Jersey, Phil Sugar Tits Murphy. All right. <laughs> Let me tell you something. This guy on November 5th, after the election, will be has signed an executive order to uh, mandate that people, uh, what's the name, people wear their mask and and and, and private and pu- public and private businesses do a whole bunch of disinfecting and a whole bunch of extra stuff, which has uh, really been proven to be completely unnecessary, particularly when his call of putting the uh, sick into nursing home, into nursing homes, led to the death of so many elders in the in those homes so he represents feminine leadership as opposed to trump's all right he will be the example used throughout the rest of this here video now let's get into uh miss kurtzleben Kurt, kurtzleben uh kurtzleben's with an s uh, article here When President Donald Trump was released from the hospital after being treated for COVID-19, he had a prescription for how Americans could handle the coronavirus. Don't let it dominate you. Don't be afraid of it. Yeah, yeah, go, yeah, that's fantastic. He said in a video from the White House, the apparent idea that the CV, which has killed at least 225,000 people in the U.S., could be wrestled into submission. 7,000 people die in this country every single day, according to CDC numbers. Just, just that, that, that's point one. The way Trump has sold strength as a key part of fighting the virus is echoed by supporters. Garland Thompson was in the cheering crowd gathered outside Walter Reed National Military Medical Center when Trump left the hospital. I asked him how he, how, how worried about Trump's health he was. He said he wasn't. He's a vibrant man. He's strong. This man looks strong, looks stronger than Biden. Let's admit it, Thompson said. Once again, no lies detected. (laughs) So... (sighs) Trump's overt hypermasculinity... Oh my God. (laughs) And just like that, the feminism, that's the first little chink in the feminism um, armor. Overt hypermasculinity was a defining feature of his candidacy in 2016. Whether he was talking about his testosterone count or his junk size or shrugging off the infamous Access Hollywood tape in which he talked about committing committing assault as locker room talk, that macho approach went on to define his presidency as well. And you know what? We lo- you, you gotta love him for it. Bravado, machismo, swag, whatever you want to call it. I mean, the, it's that same thing when Kanye went to see him the first time. He's like, yo, man, I miss my dad. <laughs> yeah, it's it's nice to have that type of uh, leadership, which is just all swagger. You know, like, yeah, we, you know, we gonna do this. B- confidence, as opposed to Fear, which Sugar Chits Murphy likes to um likes to rule by, and there are a whole bunch of little groups here in New Jersey, sitting there that, that filled with women and estrogen that are sitting there crying. Oh my goodness, yes, we need to mask up. Oh, and dudes, trust me, there's tons of sugary dudes doing this too. But it's like, oh, mask up. Oh my goodness, ah, and it's like, all right, cool. Well, you you basically raised your hand as a puppet and a pawn, and thusly not someone to listen to because uh, like, don't tell me what to do. Like, that's literally what this country was uh, founded on. His opponents know it, too, and they're trying to turn this key piece of his political cess into a vulnerability. They can't. The anti-Trump Lincoln Project has, oh, God, has made multiple ads taking aim at Trump's manhood. 
Even Fox said, you were low energy, a woman purrs in one ad about the Republican convention's TV ratings. We know it's different now. You're tired. It's hard to keep your meaningful pulse. Ratings up. <laughs> okay. Sure. Sure, sweetie. Sure. Whatevs. So, of course, masculinity is interwoven with presidential politics. All American presidents have been men, as have all major party nominees, save one. Trump didn't create this atmosphere, and he's not the only one who benefits from it either. So, so does Joe Biden. It has boosted and busted the fortunes of presidents. Oh, I can guarantee you there's not a word of, Gab of Tulsi Gabbard's in here, because if you guys remember the... Um, like, so, so, also, oh, what feels like forever ago during the primaries, what did I say? I said I love Tulsi, but I've been a realist about this this entire time, guys. So, you know, like, it's not that, oh, yeah, we won't want a woman to lead. It's just like there's a thing called integrity. And unfortunately, to get to that point, it's uh, very difficult. It's very difficult to maintain integrity and, um, you know, play the political game. However, Trump has been blatant about amping up his particular aggressive and pugilistic brand of masculinity. After four years, the machismo has manifested itself in seemingly every area of his presidency, and it ha and it matters as his has it has potential political and even policy impacts that may last well beyond his tenure in office. Carry a purse with a mask with that mask. Trump and some of his high profile supporters often portray mask wearing as a sign of weakness. It is because you're scared of something with a 99% survival rate. You are openly scared of something with a 99% survival rate. And there's a difference between being forced to interact and go to a store and, you know, wear a mask as opposed to would you rather not be wearing a mask because this isn't China? Well, well, those who, um, you know, the, the, those who don't, they, those who are more scared of the virus have gotten a lot of uh, machismo themselves. I've covered plenty of videos of, you know, people going off for, for on folks for not wearing masks. And it's just like, dude, 99% survival rate. Come on, cut it out. Like, you know, six months ago, maybe, but the, the more, the longer we go get into this and the more, um, you know, uh, constitution trampling folks, uh, governors such as Phil Murphy, uh, do the stronger the backlash is going to be. Biden in the first debate, he mocked Joe Biden in the first debate for wearing a mask and Trump implied at one point that to wear one publicly would be, would be to give in. I didn't want to give the press the pleasure of seeing it. Conservative commentator Tommy Lauren was more explicit in linking masks to gender, joking that Biden might as well carry a purse with that mask. Okay, so that was a Tommy Lauren uh, quote. Fun. Uh, in the past, men have been less likely to adopt sorts of public health measures like wearing seatbelts and helmets, as the New York Times reported. Oh, wow, the Times? Come on, NBR. See, they just, that's the thing about our media. It's a whole bunch of gynocentric jargon and nonsense, particularly uh, bolstered by its roots in academia, because I mean, they've had their um, hands there since the 60s. And now it's like, oh, well, you have all these people who just who the, who it, it won't link for all right they are so um they, they're like their mind is so feminine and they have been running on that circular logic wheel for so long that it's just not no nah, no nah, that's not happening but trump did not fight this mindset instead he continually questioned the effectiveness of masks despite his own administration's guideline guidelines promoting them because let's be real this has been nonsense. This has been a me this has been media hysterics since day one. Trump is a media guy, and so you know he's like, okay, well if they, oh my goodness, well you all saying this is the big thing, I bet. But the further we go along, the more everybody's really coming around to the fact that it's complete nonsense. <laughs> it really is. But that they're gonna whatever means in which they can use to flex their authoritarian, fascistic type, um, because they're they're the same ones. Everybody who cried. <clears throat> Oh, Trump is a fascist. Trump's going to sit here and do everything that he can to trample on our rights. When presented with the opportunity, he's not the one that trampled on everybody's rights. It was this guy. It was sugar tits over here. Look at them titties. Look at them big bouncy titties. And, sorry, guys. We're almost done here. Um, and the deal is, is that Trump, he said, I'm going to fall back. And he's let the governors do as they were supposed to do, as they were to do. And here we are. Here we are. So, guys, you know, I, like I said, I've been, uh, you know, really weary on what I'll cover for the next, you know, week or so, just because I don't want to really feel stale. But a staple of this channel is masculinity. 
we talk about you know because it's a more like all i do is really see stories and look at them from the position that my father who i knew my entire life right you know what i'm saying who guided my masculinity uh what he'd say or think about him you know what i'm saying just with my own little twist for the most part and honestly yeah we need that masculinity we've needed that masculinity for the longest time because when you run when you do things through fear through through, through masculinity right and when when we use that side of the leadership angle it's confidence it's swagger it's bravado. On the feminine leadership side with Governor Murphy, it's fear. It's intimidation. And I'd much rather, you know, from a logical standpoint, I'd much rather go the logical, the, 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 the confident route, the, the, the self-assured right route, as opposed to, oh my goodness, the, the sky is falling, the sky is falling, chicken little shit. And that was uh, what Obama you know, saying that was a that was a, a a a card that he liked to play a lot. You know, saying the, the whole fear factor thing, and now we have you know cities burning and people just completely running out of their gourd. So, with that being said, guys, we're gonna bring this one to an end. All the internet stuff. If you like this, I'll say to like this, like go ahead, do that too. Nobody's scared of you. Sub. If you enjoy my fantastic voice, I want to give videos like this every single day. Share because sharing is caring. YouTube and bitch, you don't like aren't the biggest fans of your boy over here for very obvious reasons. Bang the bell for notifications. Get something from Teespring and speak. Let me know what do you think of the um comments, guys. Once again, yeah, we need this type of leadership. My concern, I'm more looking along the lines of who in uh, who in Jersey come 2021 will be uh, more masculine and able to take. Because that was a big thing with uh, Christy. Christy got Christy got by on a lot of bravado, but unfortunately, he, like he was a complete dick, and so. <laughs> And so there's a balance. There's always that balance between the masculine and the feminine, the testosterone and the estrogen, the, you know, saying the Y and the X. Just do your best to figure it on out there, guys. This isn't an advice channel, but you may disagree. Not on the advice channel thing. Just like, yeah, we do need that masculinity uh, pumping through uh, America's veins. And if you do, that's what the comment section's for. Until the next one.